Let's be real as fuck about life, real estate, and entrepreneurship. Hi, I'm Julie Chen. You can call me Jules. The Real as Fuck brand is all about providing tools and resources to help new and struggling agents succeed. I share my personal experience not only as a new real estate agent, but also how I overcame the odds starting out as a single mom with a mountain of debt and a ton of self-doubt. Welcome to the Real as Fuck podcast, and I'm your host, Julie Chin. I'm here with the ladies of the Rockstar Lux team. If you can introduce yourselves, please. I'm Sarah Nason. I am 29, and I've been in real estate for um, about two and a half years now. I'm Marissa Parks, and I am 32 now. I had to think about that for a second. Um, And I'm going on a year in real estate. And I have very noisy dogs, so I apologize. (laughs) (laughs) I'm Deirdre Minicello. I'm the newest one on the team. So I've only been a realtor for a few months now. And I just turned 43 last month. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm getting old. Seriously? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I got, a, I got bit. a little jump on you. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Claire Cornish. I'm 23 years old, so I do not feel as old as some other people in this. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) And I have been in real estate for just under one year now. And a fun fact that you didn't ask for is I just saw Taylor Swift in Philadelphia. (laughs) And I'm still (laughs) flying high on the emotions because it was wonderful. You went and I'm all, so happy for you. You went all the way to Philadelphia for that? Why didn't you go to the I did, and it was worth it. Um, it's a long story, but long story short, for the listeners, I got a pre-approval code for Ticketmaster for one show, and that was the show. So oh. I said, I'm going to Philadelphia. Gotcha. That's yeah. it. Short version. <laughs> and my daughter lucked out and got to go to Foxborough, and... Um... However, she it was in the downpour. The whole time. Oh my the goodness, I feel time. so bad. But she looked <laughs> fabulous. and She did. And they had a blast. Exactly. Yep. That's all that matters. <laughs> and listeners, I am 55, so I'm the mama over here. And <laughs> I am starting my fifth year in real estate. Well, on to something past Taylor Swift. Although I wish I could see pictures of everybody's outfits because it is such a thing to get prepared for that. So that's definitely something I learned recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like watching you. Well, tonight, I think what we're going to do, I guess I shouldn't say tonight, right? Like, why did I just do that? (laughs) It is tonight. Might be in the morning. Who knows when they're listening? (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. We're just going with it. Uh, We're going to discuss setting goals and sticking with them and challenges and the positives of following through on those as well. So who would like to start? Sarah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm given no choices today. Not me. (laughs) Yes. Um, I think that um, just the topic of setting and sticking with goals is probably been the big thing that changed my real estate career from me almost wanting to quit real estate to finally actually like breaking through, I feel. Mm -hmm. Um, And we've talked a lot about finding, finding your why in real estate and why you do it. Mm -hmm. I think that's huge. Um, But for me, I, I love setting goals and I love setting big goals, but then it's very hard to, I think, reach those goals when they're just these giant things out in the future. Um, I think. What do you mean by I, that? Well, it's really easy to say, I want to close $5 million in real estate this year. Mm-hmm. That's great. That's a good goal. <laughs> but what does that mean for you every month? What do I need to do every month? And then what do I need to be doing weekly to meet those goals and breaking down those numbers? Um, going to how many closing should I be having every month and 
what are my conversion rates for those closings? How many conversations do I need to be having with people? What listing appointments do I need to be going on? Showings. And if I'm not reaching those numbers, what things do I need to do to make sure that I do? Um, I think with setting goals, it's really important to know yourself. Everyone's going to be different with how they set and actually stick with goals. I think you need to be honest with yourself and know, am I actually going to stick with these goals that I make? Do I need accountability? Um, am I competitive with myself? And that's great. I'll meet them because I, I want to do better than last time. Or do I need someone kind of there by my side, maybe checking in with me, making sure that I am me re like reaching these goals that I have for myself, my family, the team, however you want to do it. Yeah, I think having that person understand what it is that you need to be doing in order to achieve those goals and them checking in with you on that because it's about kind of that grunt work, <laughs> you know, the stuff you really don't want to do and it is at the top of the list for procrastination and you know, pushing off to the next day, the next day, and next thing you know, some weeks have gone by. And then you're wondering, huh, well, why didn't, why didn't I get a paycheck? Well, oh, wow, yeah, I've been, I haven't really been buckling down and doing what I need to do. So it's all, all part of that process. And so breaking down your goals into very manageable steps or ideas, right? Like, okay, I need to make five calls a day, and that will translate into one or two appointments, you know, figuring that out and pushing yourself because you can't, you can't really give yourself the day off. I agree totally with Sarah talking about enjoying goal setting, but then it's the follow through. And I think that's with anything in real estate and personal goals, you know, um, it's really difficult for me and talking about um, just goals in general, the biggest thing that helps me, whereas I am still a new agent, is our weekly goal sessions. The help that I get from the team, from you, Julie, and then from Amy, just the accountability for me, I need that or else, I mean, I look at before I joined the team, I did not have accountability whatsoever and I wasn't making moves to further my real estate journey and the second I joined the team you know that totally shifted in my mind what my priorities were what I needed to make time to do and also how to do it mm -hmm. and even with accountability it can still be hard I mean I don't want to mm -hmm. not acknowledge that you can have all the accountability in the world but at the end of the day you need to make the choice for yourself and for the career that you want you know it's very difficult i think to acknowledge what your weaknesses actually are because we all know in our head like if we'll succeed or if we'll fail based on how we've set up a plan of action so that's or something <laughs> or not yeah exactly so that's something that i've really have have had to come to terms with because i lie to myself and I think ah, at this time it will be different and I will succeed by doing exactly the same thing as I have done since the beginning but it's just not it's just not true and so that's been a huge lesson that I've learned in goal setting and in accomplishing things and I will say that it has been super discouraging because I feel like week after week lately I have been accomplishing these goals and I've been reaching out and I've been door knocking and I've been doing all these things. So I know it's a marathon that mm -hmm. this is not something that's just going to get. Uh, and for some people, you do get a successful you know, turnover rate when you begin, but that has not been for me. So it's been discouraging because I see myself constantly and consistently accomplishing these goals that I set for myself, but none of the big goals have come to fruition. So it's been a big challenge as of late because I don't want to give up. But then when I don't see any fruit from my labor, 
I think to myself, what is the point of continuing to accomplish these small goals if I am not seeing anything from those accomplishments? I get that totally. So here's the thing. Let's say you have collectively reached out to 111 people and you're just like, screw it. This is is so over it. Wasted my time. I'm over it. Maybe it's number 113 or number 112 that's your Mm -hmm. person. Like for you, I think it's really important to, to not think about when you pass the exam because you didn't really start at mm-hmm. that time. I remember when we touched base and well, or I think it was probably more so like when you came on the team and it's mm-hmm. like, okay, do you know how to use a signing program? Have you figured no. out command? How are you no. on the MLS? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Like right. you, you legit, you passed the exam and you were waiting for people to tell you to come show them houses yeah. Or hey guys, I just got my license <laughs> here. Reach out to me. Let me <laughs> help you. <laughs> yeah, so, such a tough realization, honestly. Yeah. No, for absolutely. So in my mind, you have not you didn't start real estate till December. Mm-hmm. You didn't. Not really. So true. <laughs> no, so, so true. You've got to remind yourself of that. And I think what's super important too is you know, on the team, we always talk about being on the top of the roller coaster and, you know, Mm -hmm. think of that as, you know, you've got a lot of clients and you've got closings lined up and things in the pipeline. And then the roller coaster ride goes down and there's a lot of despair in that valley and frustration and you just want to give up. And during that time is when you have to lean on everybody else on the team Mm -hmm. or for listeners, you know, lean on your mentor, lean on a family member or friend, uh, someone that can help you during those times. If you write out, like literally write it out, why you went into real estate, what, why did you go in? What do you want out of it? Mm. What's your end game for your personal goals, financially, professionally, and for your family, write it out and make sure you're reviewing it every day, especially when you're in that valley. I think it's way, way more important then. Yeah, I think that that's something that I need to implement because I know my why, like if I think about it, but I don't think about it. I'm, I don't go out of my way to remind myself, this is why I started And this is why I'm going to continue to pursue Mm -hmm. this goal that I have. So I think that that's really something that I can do and that will help immensely. And remember that you just started in December. We're giving you a new start date. It wasn't last summer (laughs) when you passed the exam. (laughs) And lean on us. I mean, we're not going to let you quit. I mean, that's really our goal that I've spoken to Amy about. We both are feel the same way. We love everybody on the team and we want to make sure we help each person through those valleys so you don't give up on yourself. Mm. You wouldn't be on the team if I didn't see something in you that I thought was special and that you were capable of reaching your goals. I mean, I I see it all the time. The fact that each of you stepped up for this podcast says so much about who you are. Every single one of you is out of your comfort zone. So am I. (laughs) But I started it. So I kind of had no choice, but you had a choice. (laughs) And so you've stepped up to share and help other people and believe in yourself. And so we're going to get there. And the goal is nobody's off the team this year. We get through the valleys. We find a way to help each other, um, whatever way we need to. So, yeah, write your goals, write your why. (laughs) Even just focus on the why right now. Get it written. Yes, ma'am. And add, I started in December. I really want that on your sheet. (laughs) You got it. (laughs) <laughs> and Marissa, it's no different for you. Okay. I was Yours... thinking every word Claire said, I was like, yeah, that sounds like Same. what I'm thinking. 
Samesies. We're over it. <laughs> well, and it's but hard it's too fine. because. Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say it's fine. We'll get through it, Marissa. We'll get we'll there. All get we'll get there. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I was just gonna add. It's hard too sometimes thinking about it from coming from a paid per hour job to I'm putting in these hours now, but I'm not getting that immediate return on those hours yet. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So that can definitely knock knock the wind out of your sails a little bit. But I think I definitely need to write down my why because same thing that Claire said. I can think about it, but I don't often think about it when I'm in those moments. Mm -hmm. I just kind of think about, I don't know, I just get salty and I need to get over it. <laughs> like all your reasons why you should just, you know, throw in the towel. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then follow that thought with, damn, Julie won't let me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just help it. you here with all your writing. No problem. <laughs> Perfect. I think I know what all our homework is for next podcast. Right, yes. <laughs> We're all going to come on with our whys. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> all right, Dee, I know you're new, but I think that in a way it's probably helpful to hear Marissa and Claire discussing these things that they've been feeling and going through. And that's a thing. So many agents think about how the, how the career is set up. People are going in and out of the office and the focus is on those that are successful and then those who are starting out, or maybe it's an agent who's been doing it five or 10 years, but they're in a lull and struggling, right? Everybody hides that. It's like, it's not okay to talk about it, but we're not going to do that here. We're going to face these things so that nobody's hiding and quitting, right? We talk about it, stick together, hold you up. That's why I was, I was really thankful to meet you Julie at Aww, the beginning thank you. because well I know I would have been in the same position as you were talking about Claire you know of getting licensed and then just nothing happening and it doesn't mm. mean that you know you're a lazy person or you're not motivated I, th I just I know that I'm the type of person that needs an like an accountability coach like mm -hmm. you and like Amy and a team that I can go to and bounce off ideas because this is all new to us. And just because we took a class doesn't mean that we know everything because we really, you don't really know much after you've finished the class. Yeah, honestly. we're really not qualified when you think about it. That's, and yet, <laughs> yeah, that's when you're really just to the starting walls. and that's when you really start learning how to do the job. So I was really thankful. So maybe listeners can think about, you know, their personality and their, how, how they generally reach goals. Do they need someone? Do they need a team? Would they, uh, I never even thought about joining a team until you brought it up to me, Julie. And I was thinking to myself, you know, you were explaining it to me and I'm thinking, this is exactly what I need <laughs> to move to reach my goals. <laughs> how come nobody brought it up to me before? And how come nobody even explained what a, the heck a team was? Yeah, I had no idea what a team was. I, I didn't know either. And maybe for first time I didn't want to say. <laughs> right, right, exactly. I think I asked you, you know, you when we were meeting one-on-one, -on -one, but... I had been wondering before then, and yeah, yeah, I didn't ask anybody. Maybe for the listeners, I don't know if, do you want to explain what a team is and what the point is? I don't know if I'm throwing us off topic. Well, we've but... got no rules, so who cares? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it, it's amazing because when I started, I also had absolutely no idea what a team was, and I thought, I didn't want to ask because for fear of looking stupid, of course. Mm -hmm. That's always my thing. Um, and then, I don't know, maybe a year in, I s got brave enough to reach out to a couple of, um, well, a few different team leads. A team lead is the person who started that team and set up meetings so we could chat. And I listened and asked questions and... I still walked away, not like totally getting it. <laughs> I could do not. Uh, and the thing is, I couldn't, what I really wanted to know 
is what are you doing for me that's going to make it worth it to me to give you a portion of my money? Because I'm going to work my ass off. So explain why you get some of my money. Like, what are you doing for me? And uh, every team is different. That's what listeners super really, really need to know is that the way I've structured this team isn't going to be the same as uh, Adam Dow's team or the legacy group or, you know, well, I guess Adam's a group too. Um, but you know what I mean? Like they're, they're just all different and it'll be that way all, all over the country. Uh, some teams will offer uh, admin help. So like a, an assistant that helps oversee the team, contract help, uh, leads. They'll provide paid leads, business cards, signage. Uh, help me out, Sarah. What am I missing? Because we both know a lot of the teams don't offer as much. Like we, we have quite an extensive list of headshots. Yeah, I try I to cover everything for a reason. Oh, I think go a ahead, lot Sarah. of it is like paying for like marketing, upfront costs. I think the benefits of jo- oh, why a lot of new agents like to join teams is like we were talking about the accountability. Mm-hmm. Um, that kind of built in mentorship that comes with that. You've got people that are way, usually many years ahead of you, some that are like where you are. Um, And also a lot of times teams focus on a very specific area. So you're, you are very concentrated and you have like showing help. Um, You get more opportunities to go to like other open houses, maybe help other agents and jump into things that you might not have had the opportunity to do right away. I know we're also kind of spoiled being in a very large brokerage um, at, you know, Keller Williams, but I think other teams or uh, not teams, other maybe boutique brokerages um, or those online only ones, the ones that are more independent um, agents don't have as many options to like host someone else's open house or go help with a showing appointment or something like that. So, yeah, that's true. For me, in constructing the team the way I have, it's everything for me, I couldn't have known it ahead of time, goes back to that beginning feeling of when I passed the real estate exam and felt so lost and frustrated and overwhelmed, of course. And so what I built is that, okay, A, new, overwhelmed, what can I do about that? Okay, mentorship, training, support, Every one of you know you can text me at almost any hour and I'm answering. Um, Accountability, we've got that covered. And bringing Amy on board as our executive assistant, it, it has just allowed us the opportunity to dive in deeper and be even more connected and thorough. So that's been really fantastic. Um. I definitely lost my train of thought there. I Um, just want to say that (laughs) I never knew a team without Amy, and I feel very spoiled for that. Like, I'm sure. Yes, thank you very much. (laughs) Thank you for everything. But I mean, I think we all have a lot of gratitude for the team and everything. Um, But yeah, I just wanted to say that because I don't know a team before. I'm sure it was great, but I mean, just having... Amy and you it's like double whammy just like double super powerful duo and you just get it you just get it done yeah it's it's evolving for sure but that's you know I've always said right Sarah I'm still learning and so even building out the team that's a learning process just like our jobs as agents it's it's constantly um evolving The other thing that was really important to me was creating value. And so I would really stress to listeners wanting to join a team, a couple of super super key things, for my opinion anyway, is finding out how much support you're going to have if you join that team. You know, how do they handle that? Um, And do they have admin help that you can go to if you have questions on contracts? Um, Money. Money was a big thing. So 23 years old, money's tight, 
right girl <laughs> and so you don't need to worry about the for us not every team is like this you don't you have to worry about the signs and the frames and the business cards and the headshots like you pass the exam and all these expenses come slam in your way and you've made no money. Very depressing, might I add. So, <laughs> Well, it's hard. And so that's something I, that's my choice to take care of that and give you a better chance of getting up and going. You know, same mm -hmm. with like photography, right? I handle photography costs for any listings. I don't have to do that. And so there'll be some teams that do that and some that don't. It's just a choice. So finding out what value that team is offering you and interviewing multiple teams, that's that's good too. So you can compare because obviously then there's splits involved in there as well. So to me, I need to... I, I need to and want to provide as much as I can to make the process easier for you guys. But like Sarah's always said, I don't mind giving you part of my paycheck. I hate talking about the money though. And so she's like, just know, I don't mind that. And it's because I, my focus is always what, what can I build for us mm -hmm. to, to make it easier because the job itself can, can be challenging. Mm -hmm. Right. So you don't need to be beat up with bills being thrown at you. I will be happy to give you some of my money when I make it. <laughs> I'll be very happy. Here you go. Like literally couldn't do this without you. Just throwing it out there. Well, when I'm the day just comes. Excited. Yeah. I'm just excited to watch each of you get to where I believe you can be. So to me, that's the huge win. Hmm. Totally. We'll get there one of these yeah. days. Yeah, absolutely. What topic were we on? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Goals. Goal Taylor setting. Taylor Swift. <laughs> always Taylor Swift. Oh. Uh, what else can we say about goals? I feel like we, you know, it's such a, it's like breathing. Everybody knows you have to have goals in life and write them down and regurgitate it and I had to make sure you're <laughs> taking the steps to to achieve. I never keep... heard. Oh, sorry. Go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead, D. I, I was just going to say, I keep thinking of this analogy in my head where I'm one of those people for exercise. I know there's some people can just go out running every single day because that's their goal. Or they might, I don't know, they just work out and they do. They They actually get a good workout. I love to exercise, but that's not me. I just won't do it unless I'm s scheduled to go to a class. And then I work my mm. ass off when I get to that class. So again, it's just, I was, I guess, trying to think of a way to, you know, have people understand that it's, if you join a team or you need to get an accountability coach, it's not because you're slacking or anything like that. It's true. It just will get you to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even have to be a coach. When I hear the word coach, I'm thinking it costs money, right? So it could literally just be another agent. It could be an agent you met in real estate school and you're both in the same place. So you're going to buddy up and have each other's backs and check in and have some accountability. Make sure you've reached out to, you know, I don't know, 10, 20 people a day, whatever, whatever the goals are. I think that that accountability is big of just, you know, being honest with yourself. I think Claire was kind of mentioning a lot of that, knowing yourself and how you're actually going to manage. Like, I will disappoint myself all day, every day. And that doesn't Same. really affect me. You know, <laughs> if I if I don't do my real estate, you know, follow-ups and lead gen, you know, and I, and I don't hit my goals originally, I was like, oh, that's my own fault. I didn't do it. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> However, I will not disappoint like my family. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, if I don't meet the real estate goals that I have set, it's going to take longer for us to get our investment property, to get our dream single family home with the acreage. So now when I look at it that way, I'm like, okay, if I don't do these things, I'm putting our family further behind than what we'd like to be. I'm not going to disappoint my husband. 
so I get my, my work done. <laughs> that kind of goal stacking and, you know, then I won't put things off. Hmm. And that's kind of how I shifted a lot of my mindset. And I'm still not perfect because I may or may not have really gotten my lead gen done this morning. So, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's your, your post-it um, say again? Get over it. <laughs> get over it. I love that. Get over it. Just do it. We can just keep adding to it. Can you say that with the trademark of Nike? Yeah. Okay. Get over it. Well, they're welcome to call us and sponsor if they want. I was thinking Sue, but sponsor, yes. (laughs) Nicer word. (laughs) All right. You guys want to shift gears a little bit? And talk about the first showing. So I know, uh, actually, I don't remember who's Sarah. I apologize. I know three of you have gone on showings with me, like your first showings. Sarah, what did we do with you? I can't remember. Oh, you had already done some, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, And you had done open houses for people. So your situation was a bit different. A little bit. I mean, but I was I was also in the same boat as Claire, though. Like, I kind of have to do my start date as a lot different. Oh, definitely. hundred percent. Because I was licensed yeah. in September, and I didn't join the team till May. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you, I, you started in May. That'd yeah. be 21, right? Or 20? 20. Yep. 21. I had gone on a couple of showings, um, but I just did them on my own and kind of winged it. That's impressive. I just want to say. It was terrifying <laughs> and wildly unprepared. <laughs> All right. So let's let's go back to your first showing and you're a solo agent and you, like all of us, have absolutely no idea what to do. So what did you do to prepare for that? that oh, I know. What did you do to prepare for that and how did you handle that showing versus what you do now? Yeah, I so that. I was all worried about, oh, I got to be professional and dress up. And then I show up to a property in heels and then you go to walk outside and, <laughs> yeah, your shoes just sink in the mud and it's raining. You're like, I did not think this through. Hey, Claire got you. all excited <laughs> by dressing you. up. I <laughs> am disappointed, frankly, that that's not the culture of New England still. <laughs> it depends. Sometimes you can. And I have started to figure out how I can be dressed up but practical at the same time. And I think that's the fun balance. <laughs> but um, yeah, and I showed up to the property. I I didn't bring any of the property documents with me. So I've got my phone with barely any connection trying to like look up, you know, the details of the property. I I couldn't, you know, someone asked me about the heating system and I'm like, I don't know. Now it's just a quick thing you kind of do. When Wait, you're did you really property. say, I don't know? Oh, I'm sure I did. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think so I was like, I oh, keep... let me check. And I'm like trying to scroll As I gasp. Phone. <laughs> well, that's the whole thing. Like, I didn't really have a mentor. I was yeah, just, you don't know. I had this referral right. that I, someone had given me. And I just show up at this property like, yeah, I looked it up before, but I I didn't know what questions that buyers were going to ask. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they'll ask you questions. And you're like, oh wow, no one's ever asked me that before. <laughs> but um, yeah, I really wasn't prepared knowing what some of the basic things of the property were. I just kind of knew the location, um, and you know, like. I don't even know. Do I walk them through the rooms? Do I let them go through? Mm -hmm. I don't think I went through and like turned on all the lights or um, really thought that far ahead. You know, I'm just (laughs) like, oh, I go there and I unlock the door and they see the property. And I don't think I even really knew like other than unlocking a door and letting them see the house. Gotcha. I don't think I even put much of my own value there until afterwards. I'm like, okay, well, that was an epic <laughs> failure. Learning experience. <laughs> well, you didn't have any lights to shut off. <laughs> like That's a drug okay. house. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay, fast forward. What do you do now to prepare for a showing? Because right now, someone, well, not right the second while we're talking, but when they listen to it, there's going to be someone who hasn't done a showing and coming up in their 
weeks ahead will be their very first showing. So what should they do to get ready for that showing? Yeah. Um, Obviously, aside from the setting appointments and everything, I think knowing the property, looking it up on the MLS, um, printing out packet for your client and yourself. So that way, as you're walking through, you can reference things and you don't have to be taking their packet and, <laughs> oh, yeah, let me go check real quick. <laughs> like, um, I have to just so. interject. I, I have gotten lazy here and there. I know that'll be shocking to everyone where I just do the listing sheet for myself and I go through all the property documents and I make notes on my cover of my listing sheet just so because, you know, it just gets old throwing away tons of paperwork uh so that's been my shortcut it doesn't mean anyone should follow that but you know no, if you're an adult do what you want to do <laughs> is it I've okay to do similar as long as you have the information and yeah. if i know the client really well and i don't have it on mine i'll be like well hand me your paperwork i'll look it up go mm-hmm. go wander um so you know it depends on my my connection with the the client Sometimes I'll screenshot the extra documents if I don't want to print them all. Um, That's smart. That Because I don't rely on the internet working because sometimes it doesn't. So I'll sc- go through and screenshot all of the pages of the documents. That way I can like quickly, you know, flip through my pictures and answer any questions. That's a good idea. I yeah. like that one. And I bet when you remember the house that I fell at, Claire? I will always remember. I know you will. <laughs> I, I'm sure I gave Don and Barbara packets, and I'm just mentioning their name because it turns out they listen to every podcast. And shout they're out, uh, <laughs> they're the nicest couple. <laughs> and they they still worked with me even though I fell flat on my face on some ice. <laughs> That's actually why they still work with you is because they fell. Flat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Okay, so I just, I know how detailed you are, Sarah, so I love hearing about your first showing. So thank you for sharing that because I just don't feel like I know anyone more detailed than you. I I see the information that you give out to people and you really dive in. Lockbox. Do you have any trouble with lockbox on the first one? I mean, I have had definitely my fair share of lockbox troubles, but I don't think I did on the first one. I have had on others. Or even sometimes locating the unit, especially if it's in a condo association. I've totally been at the wrong condo unit before. Like, smacking the lockbox trying to get the thing open, (laughs) then realizing I'm on the wrong wrong floor. (laughs) No. Lock boxes are infuriating, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's I so funny. I love that. I oh my gosh, I can't believe this story that um, the situation that just popped into my head. I forgot this even happened to me. So I was going to a showing, but it it was like I was just supposed to check out the house for the person and then get back to them because they didn't live in our area and. So embarrassing. Um, I had printed the the listing sheet for myself for some reason. I don't know why. And um, I walk in the house. You know, there's a lockbox there, but the door is ajar by about, I don't know, half inch or something. So I'm thinking, okay, I guess the list agent decided to come and now it's going to be an assisted showing. So I knock while I'm at the same time pushing the door open, right? And um, nobody answers. And so I go in and I start turning on lights and whatnot. And thinking, huh, you know, don't judge. The color of the house isn't the same color on the list. Absolutely sheet. not. And I'm like, oh, no. did, they, did they paint it? <laughs> and um, I was in the wrong freaking house. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> There I would were all these out. dogs in cages and stuff. And I'm just thinking, I've like totally trespassed on someone's property. It's horrifying. <laughs> and I had no idea. 
Oh, you guys. No big deal. Their door was awful. open? Why was their door open? Mm-hmm. And there was a lockbox there. There was no sale oh. sign in the yard, but that doesn't mean anything really because there, a lot of times sellers don't want a for sale sign in their yard and they tell the agent they're not allowed to do that. But there was a lockbox on the door. So what did yeah. you do? You just snuck out. You just ran. Just oh, I freaking took off. Yeah, booked it. Yeah. Out. That's yeah. the same vibe as your story. The drug about... paraphernalia. Mm. Yes. Same but different. <laughs> same but different. Different font. Oh my gosh. The things, the things that oh happen. Gosh. Yeah. So make sure you know what the house looks like. Make sure you double check the house number. Pay attention to details. That's what you I need have, to do. <laughs> definitely. I have a fun fact about um, the lockboxes, too. This is going to make me sound really dumb, but the first lockbox that I had uh, to deal hello, with Hello. Dumb? How? Let's see. I pulled up to a house that wasn't even the right color, and I went in. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this I is I think a you're off the hook. Marissa. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see, we'll see if you still think that when I'm done. So... You know how the lock boxes they have the little hangy thing and they hang on the doorknob, right? Looks mm-hmm. kind of like a combination lock. So I put the code in and I try pulling it down like a combination lock. Mm-hmm. And I got so angry because it wasn't working. Nothing. I put the code in 5,000 times, pulled it down. Nothing's happening. Then I realized, oh, that's because it comes forward. Oh, got you. That's yeah. not that dumb. That's yeah. not that no, dumb. I agree. That's very average, I would say. Well, myself. I felt very dumb. <laughs> very average. I feel like we've all been there. Otherwise, I guess, because you would have been able to just, like, take it off of the doorknob, if not. Look how Maybe hard she's not. thinking about it. I know. She's adorable. <laughs> she's she's like, always thinking. You're living the trauma. I, know, I, know. I can't even And picture. that list agent was mean to me, so that was also... Wait, yeah, who is me? The, trauma. the list, that list agent on that property. Mm. We don't appreciate mm. rude agents. You know, oh. there's no reason for it. Like, just get over yourself and be helpful. Mm-hmm. Like, is it really that hard? <laughs> I had Lock the same exact. Suck, though. I had the same exact experience, I think, as you, except, well, not the same. My lockbox was frozen, and it was one of the first, oh, no. like, showings I went on. I was so anxious because, you know, like you're just nervous you're excited it's a lot of emotions and I pulled up to the property and the people were there with me because we had gone to a couple that day and I go to put it in I'm like oh no this is not happening I could not get it open so I thought what the heck do I do so I start like (sighs) like breathing on it like (laughs) before they come out of the car they're walking towards the porch I'm just like (laughs) and I could not get it for the life of me then I pull my phone out, and I'm thinking, this is the last thing I want to do is be on my phone right now. I'm texting the list agent. I was like, is there something wrong with your lockbox? Like, why is this not working? <laughs> I mean, in a nice way, not as dramatic. <laughs> She's like, sometimes it sticks, and it could be frozen, because it was frozen earlier. And I think, great. This is this is it. They're not going to be able to see it. I can't get it. So they get to the door, and it was this really, you know, like, strong guy. And I was like, can... I don't know if this is normal. Can you try to open this? Like, this is the combination that's in there. He was like, yeah, sure. And he could not. He could not get it open. So I was about to say, okay, you know, sorry. I I don't know if we're going to be able to see it. Um, And I think it was warm enough. So I did get it unlocked eventually, but we were on the porch for 10 minutes just you know, yanking so at this awkward. thing, the three of us. Oh, yeah, super uncomfortable. <laughs> so I thought, okay, if this is the worst or even the most average thing that happens to me, I don't even care. Like, it's up from here. <laughs> don't have to do that again. Yeah. yeah so. right. It can only get better. I've right. had keys. I seem to have problems with locks as well. So putting a key in a, a deadbolt. This just happened to me a couple of weekends ago. Weren't you with me, Dee? I was with you, and the you witnessed it. The client yeah. putting was the one that opened it for us. <laughs> so you putting and I the both key in the deadbolt, it. it's not turning. Oh no! Yeah, two of I us. What was it? Get it. What What was the problem? Just Stupid a tricky me and Julie, key. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I call. I call. I, I called the agent. I'm like, "What's up? I can't get in. The key's not working." She's like. 
I've never had any trouble with it. <laughs> and she's, I, I actually really like her. You're she's like, not, now's not the time. <laughs> she's not snarky at all. She's, she's super, super nice. Um, but, but it was just like, really? You never have any trouble with it? Like, I can't get it. Dee's trying. She can't get it. We just need the key in. You're going to turn it left or right. I don't know which one. And it's going to unlock the deadbolt, right? They're all the same. And it didn't work. And then Donna. Donna just... And boom. I don't know how she did it. It took her a second. I don't either. Yeah. Those are embarrassing moments that, you know what? You just go with it. There's nothing you can do about it. And at least the person got in the house. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's true. I think Goal goal achieved. It's about goals, right? (laughs) I think (laughs) if I can't even open this stupid thing, how are they going to think I'm qualified to do anything (laughs) past this point? (laughs) You need a degree to to get through these things. (laughs) And the older ones, oh my goodness, they're like, so it's funny. So obviously I'm way, way, way out of... uh, school age like high school where you need a locker and the combo thing that's two to the right one all the way to the left and then to the right to the number there are lock boxes like that and there are agents who and maybe maybe you're on my screen right now who have never had the combo lock from middle school or high school on your locker where you have to turn it that way and so I have heard stories from agents who are like, I got to call the person to know to go, you know, to the right, one to the left, one to the right. So, yeah, there's um, there's even a lockbox that's got all these letters on it, too. That one is really confusing. When the day comes that I have to use those, I might shed a tear and then I'll call one of you probably. <laughs> have us <a> some FaceTime. <laughs> Have you ever not been able to get into a house for a showing? Yes, ma'am. So what did you do? Did you just look at the windows instead? Um, I feel like that's what I I would do. (laughs) Well, what's awful about it is for this general area, I would say nine times out of ten, someone's driven hours to get to this property to view. So you just feel horrible and there's nothing you can do. And if the list agent isn't answering or can't get there and you can't get in, there's been electronic lock boxes that won't open. They're just, they're jammed. Uh, someone's, the agent before maybe left with the key. I, all sorts of situations have happened. And then you're just standing there and you feel terrible. And there's nothing you can do. It's good to hear that it happens, though, because when it happens to me, which I'm sure it's going to happen one day, yeah. maybe I won't feel as bad. Yeah, well, you're going to feel terrible, and then you're going to be like, I'm going to live through this. This is not the end. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's terrible. But, you know, because at the end of the day, we want to make our clients and our customers happy, and they put in all this time and effort to come see a house and it really shouldn't be that complicated (laughs) to get through a door. (laughs) So documents uh, showing up early. Hello, early, 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 early. Super important because what you need to do is have time to deal with the lockbox. You need (laughs) time to get through that deadbolt and go through the house and turn the lights on and Make sure that the house is ready for someone to view. Before you do all that, a good realtor safety tip is to walk around the perimeter of the house and make sure you don't see any broken windows or unlocked doors so that you know what you're getting into. If you saw broken windows or a back door was ajar or unlocked, that's likely not a situation where you want to go into the house. What I have done in situations where I don't feel comfortable entering the house, I will stay in my car. Once I've made that determination, I'll stay in my car until my clients arrive. And I'll let them know, hey, I wasn't comfortable going in by myself, so let's head in together. And they're they're always, always okay with that. And, and just know that that's always an option for you, too. If there's something about the property that makes you a little uncomfortable, don't go in it alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've gone into a property and I just was not being a baby. I don't want to say that, but I just had an off feeling because there were some lights that were on and it could have just been somebody that went before and just didn't turn the lights off. But I was like, 
a little creeped out just because I get mm. creeped out really easily. And I just went back <laughs> to my car. I was like, oh, I'm just going to wait here. Lock the doors. <laughs> just it's yeah. better to be overcautious with that it, stuff. I mean, it really truly. is. Absolutely. And then in that situation, it could have been a couple of things. It could have been that the previous agent, as you mentioned, maybe left the lights on. Sometimes homeowners will leave all the lights on because they're trying to be helpful. Some list agents, when they know they've got a lot of showings for that day and with the seller's permission, they'll go in and turn all the lights on Mm -hmm. and ask the agent, hey, leave the lights on the way you found it. Yeah. Because I have more showings after you. So it could have been any type of situation. It was also empty so it was just a little eerie so like nobody was living there at the time got you i'm out see ya yeah got it yeah safety first that's really really that's the most important thing i don't think we miss anything oh you know what let's talk about this because you said sarah i i don't didn't know if i was supposed to show them room to room or uh hang back so i think that's worth discussing The benefit of showing someone around the property, especially if it's an occupied home, is that you're watching after that homeowner's items, you know, their their personal possessions. Even if we're not the list agent and we're there and we're representing the buyer, we have a duty to protect the property. So that's the benefit of walking people around. What I personally like to do is not um, make my clients or customers feel smothered. I know for me personally, if I want to purchase a property, I need someone not talking to me. Just stop, stop telling me like, oh, look at the crown molding, look at the floor. I've been in so many showings where I've had the list agent's present. I'm glad they're there because they can always answer questions. So I think that's a benefit. But they tail us constantly and never, ever, ever shut up. So they're pointing everything out, which they, I know they, they think they're being helpful, which is phenomenal. But my client can't think. And so I happen to understand that because that's how I would be. I would want to walk in and know that I can go back to them and ask my questions. But in the meantime, I can go through the house and try to get a feel for it. And does the space work for me? And I feel like most of my clients are actually that way. In in the years I've been doing it, I've, I, I think I've only had a couple people who really wanted someone to stay with them and talk about the property. And I've had people not purchase property just because they felt so annoyed that someone was tailing them and talking constantly. Yeah, we think it's really uncomfortable. I think yeah. putting yourself in your client's shoes, because if I think about it, if I was a buyer walking around through a house, I don't know that I would always want my agent to be literally right over my shoulder. I mean, I understand being nearby, kind of keeping a general eye on things, but being able to walk through, really observe the place and, you know kind of envision if it's going to fit for you and then kind of regroup is a lot more comfortable, at least for me. And I think it's also going to be different for every client. Like you said, some of them really want, wants you to be there for every single room and every single part and maybe pointing out certain things. Um, but yeah. You're on mute, Julie. Yeah. I think you're on mute. Girl. Well, you know, just check in to see if y'all are paying attention. (laughs) I was just going to say, I just said a whole bunch of things. No, not really. Um, You need to know your audience and you need to read, read your client, read your customer and and get a feel for what's going to make them most comfortable. You looked very happy saying it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're going to save our other topics for another day just because we'd want to do those um, justice. So many. And not rush through. So many. <laughs> yeah, but it's super helpful to people. No, I know. I meant it in a good way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes just my tone just really <laughs> <laughs> sounds condescending and bitter, but it's... <laughs> 
not intentional. I need to remember. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> I just had this thought. Imagine last summer, pre-team, how you would have felt if you stumbled upon these podcasts. Right? Confused like used that this is like one of the first tools that are accessible in regards to new agents you know mm. but well, grateful yeah <laughs> I would have just been really confused why somebody would want to help because <laughs> it's like it took this long for somebody to you know notice this group of people that need help but it's gonna help well, I'm a little envious of the people that get this mm. when they're just starting their journey but yeah, it's okay. I, well, but you're part of it. Well, and yeah, you're helping that's people. True. So I think that's really special. Well, podcast, let me think, what is it? Podcast nine went live today. And that is with Lexi. And she, when we taped it, she was still in real estate school. So what's been really cool is she's read the book a few times and made tons of notes. And, and She's using the book to interview the brokerages. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, Very so cool. I'm I'm walking her through that, and that's a pretty pretty cool thing. But it's all on her, and it's great. She she grew up with my youngest, and so here she is, eighteen, nineteen years old, and and she's out there armed with her questions from the book and going brokerage to brokerage and interviewing oh, cool. them and finding out what they offer and comparing and she'll be able to make that decision of course I want her to come to KW but at the end of the day I'll help her no matter where she goes mm. because I I'm excited to see how she is able to use these resources I know she listens to the podcast so shout out to Lexi um <laughs> and It'd just be so cool. Just like I get the opportunity to watch you guys grow and evolve. And I, I totally get feeling frustrated and, you know, also understand that when you came in, the market has changed up again. So we're having to navigate cha changes. So that's like a couple steps back, regroup, figure out a new way, boom, and then move forward. So we're working on a bunch of things all at the same time. Mm. But we believe in you. So put a smile on your face. Big things are coming. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, thank you for, does anyone have anything else they want to add today? You're all ready for dinner. Okay, long, got long it. live Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> You're adorable. Shout out to Kobe, who's a Swifty as well. Yeah, that's right. And her outfit was <laughs> so cute. <laughs> she listens right she supports yeah her mother. yes she does she's adorable <laughs> for anyone listening kobe's my oldest daughter i have three daughters and she's she's the oldest well thank you for listening and supporting us feel free to send in your questions and check us out on our website at realafprogram.com and all the social media platforms you can find us at real af program <laughs>